We were taught to listen to the sounds near and far and then to listen to our heartbeats. Is it just an initiation or is it helpful? I think that little technique would be an initiation. It would be a preparation for meditation. If we're teaching from the richness of the Christian contemplative tradition, then we have to make a distinction between preparation for meditation and meditation itself. You can prepare for meditation in the way we did with some stretching, some physical preparation, or the reading of scripture, or some other form of awareness, exercise, your mind calms down, and you, or music. You can use different ways to prepare for the meditation. But don't confuse the preparation with the thing itself. We have to go into the thing itself, into the meditation. This is what the people want. We have to give the full meal of prayer to people. So we have to make this distinction between preparation and the meditation itself. What explains the meditation itself is simplicity. This is a very simple method. It can be practiced by a child, by an old person, by somebody on their deathbed, by a prisoner in prison, by somebody recovering from a cancer operation, or somebody, you know, raising a family in the middle of their life. It can be practiced by anyone, and it is simple. Okay. Not, not easy. I'm not pretending that it's easy, but it is simple. And as soon as we start, we only have to start. As soon as you start, the Lord comes to help you and teaches you. What you are giving is from the oldest of the Christian meditation tradition. We should call it old Christian meditation. Catholic Church is an offspring of all meditation, Buddhist, Hindu, and others. Is that correct? Yes. As I said at the beginning, we find meditation in all the great religious traditions. This is God's gift to humanity. But if we are meditating in Christian faith, then we should learn from the specific Christian tradition, which is a historical tradition, it goes back to the words of Jesus. We have the whole of the Christian mystical tradition to, to guide us. We should meditate supported by the sacraments and the other forms of Christian prayer. We should meditate with other Christians in our churches, in our communities. So that's what makes meditation Christian, but above all, what makes our meditation Christian is our faith in Christ. And if we are deeply rooted in that Christian identity of meditation, we will then be in a position to dialogue on equal terms with all the other traditions. I've been in dialogue with other religions for many years, and believe me, we have something very precious to share with them. And the more deeply contemplative we are, the more we have to share. Towards the journey of an initiation, if a Buddha comes here, kill Buddha. If Christ comes in, uh, kill Christ. So externally, maybe technically, or the technique may be the same as a Christian and Buddhist meditation, but substantially, it seems to be conflict and opposing each other. So here is a person center, Christ center. Here is a nobody must come in between. How would you justify that? The response to that is that it is in the person of Christ that we find our way to enter the union with God. Jesus is not in the way. He is the way. He's not an obstacle. Uh, he is the way in which we enter into this deeper union with God. We have to, I think, really un understand the mystery of Christ. Meditation has don't understand the mystery of Christ in all its fullness, but I can certainly say I understand it better because of meditation. If we read the resurrection appearances of Jesus, we see that he appeared to the disciples. They didn't recognize him, or they were even frightened of him. And then he calmed them. He brought them to calm and then he would disappear from their sight. But when he disappeared from their sight, 
they did not feel he was absent. Like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, at the breaking of the bread, he disappeared from their sight. But they were filled with joy and confidence and they ran off to proclaim the good news. So all, all of the resurrection appearances show that. We know Christ, as St. Paul says, no longer after the manner of the flesh. We know him in his risen form. In the ascension, he has moved from our sight in order to be more deeply present to us uh, from within. So I think that's the starting point for Christian meditation, that he is with us and he is accompanying us. We are going with him on this journey to the Father. But the only thing we have to remember is that there are many dimensions to this experience of Christ, many forms of prayer. In some of them we are using our thoughts and images, in sacraments, in scripture, in mental prayer. And those are important to nourish our Christian understanding, Christian faith. But there is also, as the Christian tradition teaches, there is also this level of prayer of the heart, where we are so confident in Christ's presence that we can let go of our images of him or thoughts about him and enter into a more direct and personal relationship with him. So it is very different from Buddhism, there's no doubt. I think what Buddhism gives us, in a way, is like how the, how the clock works. Buddhism is very rational and has good psychology, and it, it shows us how the mind works. We don't need to know all of that, but it's, it's helpful and interesting to know some of it. But I think what Christian faith brings us is the meaning, the meaning of time, not just the way the clock works. And what we have in Jesus is the embodiment of that meaning. To know Jesus is to know the Father. To see Jesus is to see the Father. About this idea of emptiness, the Buddhist sunyata, anatta. For the Buddhist, the essence of all things is emptiness. Now that sounds very negative to us, but it, emptiness is not nothingness. Emptiness is not nothingness. They define emptiness as being the nature of things, of everything, that it is interdependent and it is impermanent. So the nature of everything we can see, know, is impermanent and interdependent. The fact that we are all here today has many, many causes, many interdependent causes. It is temporary. In a few minutes we're going to go to lunch. This meeting is over. So everything in our life is like that. I think that is very similar to what we mean by creature. Creation is also impermanent. All things are passing away. And everything in creation is dependent upon upon God, upon the, the Creator. So I think there are key ideas in Buddhism that we can relate to within Christian theology, Christian understanding, but there's no perfect translation. And the differences between the two traditions are just as important as the similarities. As good dialogue is to respect those differences. One of the similarities is in meditation that we all get distracted, the Buddhists fall asleep in meditation, they struggle with it, and, and so on. That's the similarity. The difference is our understanding of Christ. And that in our meditation, we are experiencing at a level deeper than thought, deeper than words, we are experiencing the real presence of Christ in our hearts. And in that way, we fulfill our destiny, which is to, to travel with him into union with the Father. And that as we do that, we learn to see him present in everyone. I think that's the Christian experience that comes out of our meditation. This idea that we, we go in some times of prayer deeper than thought is not an importation from Buddhism. Not at all. 
There are similarities and differences between Buddhism and Christianity. We should be very clear about the similarities, but also respect the differences. But you're, you're absolutely right that in our understanding of the meaning of what we enter into in the silence, it is Christocentric. Maybe we could just end with this prayer of St. Paul, which is a very beautiful summary of what I've been trying to share with you this morning from the uh, letter to the Ephesians. With this in mind, I kneel in prayer to the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name, that out of the treasures of his glory he may grant you strength and power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that through faith Christ may dwell in your hearts in love. With deep roots and firm foundations, may you be strong to grasp with all God's people what is the height, the length, the depth, and the breadth of the love of Christ, and to know it though it is beyond knowledge. And so may you come to fullness of being, the fullness of God himself. I don't have any uh, instrument or a thermometer to measure up uh, what uh, progress you have uh, made uh, during these, uh, these uh, morning four hours or not. We have uh, definitely, no, infallibly, uh, make a, a step forward, no, a first step forward in our contemplation and in our our uh, med meditation. As Father has said, uh, one thing uh, very essential is uh, never to give up, not give up. I think uh, I don't know. His name suggests, no, Father Lawrence, a free man. If you are. Uh, Fully a uh, contemplative person, I think you become like, according, like, according to the, the Buddhist also, meditation also, you become a free man, a free person. So we wish that uh, Father is uh, really a free man and also we are uh, aspiring towards this uh, freedom, freedom, the detachment. So Father, uh, we thank you for this uh, four hours of uh, your your sharing your life and especially to all of us uh, the priests and religious so let us thank the lord and let us also thank uh, father lawrence